Hi there, welcome back to the podcast of Wednesday's Child. As you know, we always try to bring you some really interesting conversations, perspectives and guests from time to time. And today I've got two guests with me on the Wednesday's Child podcast. The first person is Isabel Lemming, who is a therapist of our team and someone that I know you've very recently heard from. And those of you that have joined our Parent Carer webinar in uh, a recent occasion will also have um, seen her tapping demonstration, which went down very, very well. And we're also joined with Laurie, who is new to the Wednesday's Child podcast and our community, but you are just going to be fascinated what she has to say. So Laurie Higbert is from Awaken Life Sciences. So I'm going to kick off by asking you both just to very briefly introduce yourself so you can do a far better job than I would do of, of saying who you are and what you do. So Isabel, welcome back. Happy New Year. And uh, would, would you like to kick off with a quick introduction? Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me back. Um, it's good to see you again. Um, yeah, so hi everyone. I'm Isabel Lemming. I'm a, a therapist with Wednesday's Child. So I help people with, with a range of things through a range of different mod modalities and techniques, some of which you may have seen already. Um, I'm also a practitioner with something called RTMS, which is a relatively new and upcoming treatment within the UK as well. Excellent. And innovation in therapy is all perfect for the theme of today's podcast episode. So that's great. Um, and Laurie, tell us a little bit more about you and the position that you come from. Sure. Thank you for having me uh, on, on your podcast. My name is Laurie Higbed. I'm a clinical psychologist and I work for Awaken Life Sciences and I'm based in a clinic in Bristol uh, where we are using ketamine assisted psychotherapy. So a very exciting and innovative treatment where we use ketamine as an adjunct to psychotherapy to treat a range of difficulties that includes anxiety, depression, um, eating problems um, and addictions. So really exciting clinic and service to be part of. It, it certainly is an exciting clinic, but it really, I think it's going to make for an exciting and animated discussion too, because I hear that word ketamine and I can almost hear people's reaction going, what? She's going to talk about ketamine? What does that mean? What, 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 <laughs> what, what's she doing recommending that? Isabel, when you hear yeah. about kind of services of this nature and, and this kind of modality, as a more perhaps originally traditional therapist, tell me your reaction, tell me your thoughts and, and you know, what kind of perception you have and you think that people that come to your kind of services would perceive of that. Yeah, I mean, personally for me, I find it quite exciting. Um, but that's because I've always been very aware of its use in the past as well not necessarily ketamine sorry but other um you know there's been a lot of research down in London but also in America of things like psilocybin and other sorts of drugs in the use of it with therapy um and because of my work within TMS which is also more of a recent treatment over here as well um that sort of gets me often looking at other therapies and things that are being introduced to help people that are maybe outside of the realm of what we might usually see. Um, so when you talk about so, outside of the realm, are we talking about yeah. of people that have found it hard to move on from uh, an experience of, of mental ill health, so depression, anxiety and eating disorder? Are we talking about prolonged status of illness? Yes. So, for, I mean, from, from my position with the, particularly because a lot of my experience comes with that TMS treatment, um, that, that's that's certainly recommended for those people who have more sort of long standing, particularly depression, um, but other things as well. So that's where we begin to look at what are the other options for these people where potentially other things like, I don't know, CBT or counselling or often medication, which is usually the first line of treatment that they're given, isn't necessarily helping them. So what else can we look for? And that's what sort of brought me into this this new world of, of discovery of all these, these other great things that are, are happening at the moment as well. Amazing. OK, great backdrop there. And Laurie, that kind of fits perfectly then to, to move on to where you're from and say, OK, then. So is that the natural step? Do you start to see the very people who have tried CBT and maybe they've been on antidepressants and they are just feeling like, what else is there for me? What What's the other solution? Is that the natural person that comes forward to Awaken Life Sciences? 
That is absolutely the kind of people that come to us at Awaken Clinics. Those who have tried all those traditional treatments, uh, such as uh, SSRIs, antidepressants, which can work for some people, medications can be helpful. Um, but for those who haven't found benefit or if it's that they've had side effects that they haven't tolerated, um, or they've tried CBT, those traditional kinds of therapies, um, and again, haven't been able to benefit from those as they'd like. So we're in this wonderfully unique position of offering um, a compound that does have psychedelic properties. And Isabel mentioned um, those kind of those psychedelic compounds such as psilocybin. Um, we've also got MDMA. Um, in, in research trials that can, that can offer something uh, similar as well. But in, in Awaken, we're using ketamine and its psychedelic properties and its ability to enhance that neuroplasticity, as we call it, so that flexibility. I love that word. <laughs> it's a great love that neuroplasticity. <laughs> well, I want to see that word in a crossword. I just love the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, completely agree with you. But it's just this window of opportunity in which we can then work with people therapeutically to help them really move move make changes when they've been really stuck we know people who have been really stuck uh, perhaps with eating difficulties with low mood with those anxiety problems um, and there can be that kind of rigidity around their kind of the, uh, around thinking and feeling and behaving that people want to kind of move on from, but it, they're struggling with that. Um, that's where we can really use ketamine as an adjunct to psychotherapy to help with that. So how does it work then? So how are you, you know, let's take somebody who says, that's it. I, I'm completely convinced that I'm going to go with this route. I have been long term stuck, but I'm ready to move on. I've got this rigidity, but I want to change my life. Do you just start prescribing them a certain amount of ketamine and they go home on their jolly and that's it? Or do you have them under a very controlled environment initially? How, do, how does it work? Talk me through that. Yeah, it's it's in a really controlled uh, setting, Debbie. Yeah. So what we do is we only offer the ketamine uh, to be taken, um, it's prescribed and taken within our clinic. So we have clinics in Bristol um, and in London and also in uh, Norway as well. And so people come to our clinic um, and then we have uh, some careful preparation with them. So we undertake uh, at least two preparation sessions with people. That's just normal one-to-one -one talking therapy, helping them to feel as ready and comfortable as possible. So we're really taking care of the environment so making sure sure it's kind of we, we're a clinical environment but also a comfortable relaxed setting and um, making sure they have the right mindset going into their experience and then typically the following week they would take they would have a ketamine session with the therapist present they come to our clinic have a ketamine experience um, with their therapist right there beside them supporting them and holding that space and then the following day, they would come back for another therapy session, what we would call an integration session. And that's really super important. That's to help make sense of the ketamine experience, but also using that window of opportunity that I mentioned, that, that increased that neuroplasticity, I'll say it again, that enhanced flexibility <laughs> in the brain. Um, to really make those changes, to help kind of really bed in the therapy, if you like. So rather than talking the talk, we're going to use that ketamine to help people actually walk the walk and do things differently. And then we repeat that process. So the following week um, and the next couple of weeks, people would come in, take ketamine with us, be supported by a therapist and then have therapy the following day. And how long does that go on for? I mean, you're probably going to say, well, it varies for every person, but roughly like, you, yeah. you know, how much might somebody want to keep returning to you and, and how long lasting will that be? Yeah, good. That's a, that's a great question. So um, it can, uh, you're right, can vary from person to person, um, but typically the course is around 11 sessions over eight weeks. So it's actually a fairly brief but intense uh, intervention. So we have these, like I said, this week or so of preparation. So maybe a couple of sessions in that one week, then typically four back to back ketamine sessions. Um, and we think that's the best way of doing it because we kind of build up the ketamine in the brain um, and also get that momentum with the psychotherapy going then we have a couple of weeks break and then a follow-up to see how people are doing and for most clients that are coming through our doors that's sufficient that's enough that's the, that's sufficient the for how long though I mean are, are you genuinely saying sufficient full stop sufficient go away live your life you'll never need to see us again or sufficient until six months time when 
you know, your cat gets run over and life is a bit stressful and then everything goes back to square one. I, I, you know, I, I'm being really flippant, but, you know, where how long could that last? Yeah, ab- absolutely, Debbie. So what people tend to find is you is with ketamine, it was first used um, in mental health settings as this short acting antidepressant. So we might find that people find uh, they are uplifted in mood for anything between kind of 24 hours to maybe a week or a little bit more after their initial session. But actually, actually what we're doing is it, it's because we're embedding it with a psychotherapy framework and we're using the ketamine to help make some real changes and behavioral um, and some cognitive shifts in people's lives, that is seen as the kind of platform uh, for people moving forward. But you're right, you know, that it does, it's this platform or this stepping stone towards recovery, as we sit, but people do have to um, keep making those changes in their lives. There may be some more increased resilience and robustness. So if your cat gets run over, you feel like you've got the effective tools to cope with that. So just like in traditional talking therapy, we will do some, you know, skills training and learning new ways of responding to distress um but it will be ongoing an ongoing process of integration for clients so we're not saying take four set have four sessions of ketamine with us and you're cured that's not the way we're going about it but it's a real stepping stone forward for people so arguably something that we talked about earlier on so for example where isabel might see people that who have been quite seemingly quite resistant to antidepressants or natural CBT if they perhaps had a a course of this with yourself and they got sort of so far down the track Isabel you might then be able to step in and have a more successful intervention with other therapeutic approaches that you commonly use was that one for me I'm so sorry Debbie yeah it was but I think Laurie's gone again hasn't she yeah I think so (laughs) she stopped mid-flow Oh dear! Do you want I me thought to maybe she moved. We'll see if she comes back. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah. Oh, hi, Laurie. Oh no, can't see. Oh, hello. I can hear her voice, but I don't so, know if you want me to log it out and log back <laughs> again. Oh no, you're there. Hi, Laurie. <laughs> can see you again. <laughs> hi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I wish, good? This is why we're, when I'm at home, it's better. In the clinic, a nightmare. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you well and good. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to do, um, Isabel, is yeah, pick up with asking plug people. in as well and see if that helps. Oh, okay. So Isabel, what I'll try and move on, I'll pick up that question about... Um, yeah. Does that create a more open door for you to be able to explore with other therapeutic pathways after the intervention? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that works. All right, Laurie. You okay, Laurie? Are you okay, Laurie? Can you hear? It, it's glitchy. Oh, I don't think that's just work, Laurie. about. I can just about hear it's glitchy. I'm just going to come out and back in. I think it might be a good idea. Oh, that's such a shame. It's it's such an interesting conversation. I'm hoping Andrew will be able to edit it all through. But (laughs) if not, we might just say, given that she said that her setup at home is better, I wonder if we just do it of an evening. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what this... We'll see how we go, yeah. Yeah, see where we go with this one, if not. Hi again, Laurie. Hi, Laurie. Hello, any good? Hi. Better. You good? Good. Okay, so what we just said we'll try and do is we'll try and crack on. If we get another glitch, given what you've just said about coming in from home, we might just say we'll do it an evening or something when you're back at home, if that's okay, rather than have too many breaks through this. Yeah, sorry. I'm in the middle no. of Bristol. I'll be fine. <laughs> so I'm going to move on now. I'm going to um just I'm going to ask a question of Isabel about kind of does this make after this neuroplasticity does it make it easier for Isabel to pick up with her kind of therapeutic practices if that's all right? Okay. Right, Andrew, I'm picking up again. <laughs> so 
so Isabel, given the intervention approach that we've talked about there with Laurie, would that, for mm -hmm. example, help you where perhaps you have seen people where they may have been relatively treatment resistant? Would you feel after some element of neuroplasticity has been achieved via this approach, you feel that maybe some of your traditional therapeutic strategies could help with those kind of people? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's something that I've actually experienced in the past, but definitely once things like EFT, which is one of the modalities I use as well as other things as well, people are much easier able to, first of all, um, contribute to the sessions and bring more to the session and work through the session with me almost as a team. But also after that, they're better able to implement tools. Usually that's from my experience with something like TMS, which as we've sort of discussed briefly before, works in a similar way in terms of those people that are treatment resistant, um, giving them a bit of a boost and a bit of a lift and then being able to implement other things later on. That's exactly, I think, from my perception, would, would work the same as some of the work that, that Laurie's doing. So it would definitely give them then more ability to access these other tools that I can show them. Um, and as Laurie mentioned, some robustness as well, that they'll have some other skills from that that will help them to implement other things that I can show them as well. Okay. So Laurie, is there a kind of person that this is more useful for than for others? I mean, obviously, we're, a, you know, an eating disorder community podcast, so we're going to be ending up, you know, speaking on the airwaves to people that have been through an eating disorder for a long period of time, but, you know, other people that have had long episodes of um, ill, poor mental health. Do you do you feel there are people that you would really encourage to seek out Awaken and, and the service provision that you have and those that really do need to go another route first? Well, this is not a first line treatment. Um, so this is absolutely for those people that have really tried plenty of other things. Um, and for example, our inclusion criteria means that you have to have tried at least two other treatments um, before you can come to us. And I think that's that, that's right. I think we should, you know, using um, ketamine and other kind of psychedelic compounds, it's right that there, um, if there are traditional treatments that work for people, it's right that those should be tried first. You know, if um, an antidepressant and some CBT helps uh, a person, that's that's great. It's for those people who've really tried those other things um, and have been struggling for perhaps many, many years of their life and, and really want to, as I said, make some uh, steps forward. So those people who have found that they've, I think stuckness just covers it really well. Those yeah. people who are just feeling really stuck. Um, and we often use this metaphor of um, like shaking the snow globe. So I think this covers not just ketamine, but um, other psychedelic compounds as well. Um, it's like if you're uh, if you're struggling perhaps with eating difficulties, low mood, for example, you're like uh, you're skiing down this well-worn path. Um, the more you ski down that slope, um, the more bedded in those tracks become, and it's and it's difficult to take another uh, another path down that down that track. And so we use a kind of ketamine to shake the snow globe, um, and you have like a fresh layer of snow over the tracks, and that gives you the opportunity to ski where you like um, so you can create those new pathways um it, it, yes in your brain but also in how you live your life most importantly that's such a great analogy and it, and it fits so yeah. well with what we talk about on this podcast all the time about you know there there are two very important elements to eating disorder recovery one of course is nutritional rehabilitation but you can't just do the nutritional rehabilitation yeah. alone it's got to be the neural rewiring so some people think you know well, I, I'm kind of eating now and, and and it's still not fixed in my head. So for some people, it is that neural rewiring becomes like that the well trodden path of the snow, the snowy hill that needs to be relayed, as you say, and, and find a way forward. So I, I can completely see the sense. I can see why it would work for some people more than others and why you would want them to have perhaps historically tried other pathways. I guess also, given the nature of what you've said there about people having had past experiences of trying other treatment modalities, that may indicate why there might be an age range that you are more specifically targeting with this. 
Yeah, it, so it it is uh, adults of um, uh, work uh, adults of working age as we traditionally describe it. So um, eighteen plus. Um, so as yet, we haven't tried this on on under eighteens. Um, that would certainly be something that would be of interest. But you're right, Debbie. In it, typically before you're eighteen, you haven't necessarily have the opportunity to try all those traditional treatments. Um, so most people that come to us are probably maybe in their 40s and 50s, but also plenty of people in their 20s, 30s as well. Okay. And let's let's talk commercially. I mean, you know, a therapy and solutions of any nature are a challenge for people to consider. We're talking also in the middle of a cost of living crisis and some people are thinking, you know, if I can't get something via my GP, I'm not going to get it any other way because it's just not the money in the in the kind of family pot to enable them to do so. But I'm assuming this isn't something that you're going to be able to walk into your GP service and say, can I have that ketamine thing, please? <laughs> That's just not going to happen, is it? So what, what's what's the option for, for somebody who's thinking, do you know what, I'm really tempted by this? Yeah, you, yeah, you're absolutely right. Not yet can you walk into a GP surgery and request it, but uh, Awaken, we are working on it. Um, and we have established some early links with NHS providers who are interested in um, us pro providing this service um, within within the NHS so that it's, it is free at the point of access. And that is absolutely what we're gunning for. However, at the moment, um, it is self-funding. Um, and uh, the cost of the treatment is uh, £4,995, 4, so it is, an, uh, it is a real expensive outlay for people. We completely appreciate that. Um, but, uh, you know, it hopefully feels like it is giving you know, value for people to, real, to, to really make that step forward in, in their lives and then go on and perhaps engage in some of the treatments that Isabel was describing as well. I think that's really worthwhile in pointing out that they can then go on and access other treatments more effectively. Um, and at the moment, we take self-referrals. So you don't need your GP or a psychiatrist or um, another service provider to refer you. You can self-refer via our website. Um, so um, awaken, at awakenclinics.com, you can just uh, look at our website, fill in a self-referral form, and then we ask for some more information. So we do a triage uh, assessment to try and check that as many people that we're, that we're seeing face to face are going to meet eligibility criteria. As you can imagine, there's some um, specific criteria that people need to meet for this treatment. Um, but great that we can have people just visiting the website and self-referring. And I imagine actually, Isabel, you probably also see that people feel quite sort of um, relieved that self-referral is an option for your therapeutic approaches as well, because right now all we hear is waiting lists are really, you know, tricky and it's only the kind of more extreme cases that get right to the top of the surface, you know, quicker in terms of mental health. Self-referral in, in both what you offer and in, in terms of Laurie's practices, I think it's vital, isn't it, to people that are in a state of stuckness. Yes, absolutely. One one thing you sort of touched on is, is it can sometimes almost feel for them like a fast track, because as you say, they're not having to wait. But also, I think it gives them that control. It's their control of making that decision that actually, I am ready and I do want to try something else. And, you know, I've, I've gone and I've had a look at the website and wh whatever research they may have done. But it's yeah, it gives them that control as opposed to um, the GP or psychiatrist, whoever it may be. Um, which sometimes there can be comfort in that but also I think it can be good for people to have have that sense of control over their decisions um, primarily in, the, in that treatment. And we all come to that point where we're ready to open the door and and walk forward at different times you know at different age and stage yeah. in life you know for whatever reason and I think one of the the difficult challenges right now with in terms of gaining that mental health support is how do we ever know that the availability and the opportunity in that healthcare space is there at the very point that that person is ready to embrace it and walk through the door. And, and making those two things come together perfectly is, is often a real challenge, you know, because if we miss that window of opportunity, then that person might fall into another depth of despair and depression and they can't even put their head above the parapet to think, oh no, I can keep going. So I think that opportunity, as you both say there, to self-refer, it really is, it is a, a vital thing. So Laurie, moving forward, obviously we're still kind of relatively early stages in terms of where the cl clinic is set up and, and how 
how many people have been through the doors and, and been successful in this. Where now and, and what can we expect if we're checking in with you and which I'm sure Isabel and I will want to do in six months time and kind of seeing what the progress has been and who, who can we hear from who's had great success with this. Where, where do you hope to be in say a six, six months from now? So uh, we are hoping to have a more service option. So we're, uh, we're hoping to open our doors um, in other areas of, uh, of the UK. And we're developing our partnerships um, internationally as well, which is really exciting. Um, so we're working with partners in the United States to help that there are actually other ketamine uh, providers in, in America. Um, it's actually more widely used in America, but typically it's ketamine provided without therapy and because at Awaken we really believe in this combined model um, we're going to be helping other uh, ketamine clinics use that Awaken methodology of the ketamine in combination with the with the therapy that we use so that's really exciting we'll look for a kind of more of, a, of the Awaken model within international partnerships um, and also some exciting stuff we're doing around research as well so um, we're uh, we're researching uh, ketamine as a support for gambling addiction um and also we're we're using it in in a research protocol uh for ketamine assisted psychotherapy to treat alcohol use disorder as well and we've also got research interest in mdma as i mentioned so we're looking to develop that that might happen in the next in the next six months and crucially as i said we've also got around the ball around these nhs partnerships that's a real focus for us and something that we're really excited about getting this interest and the ball rolling uh, with being able to offer this to more people this is um this is what we want to do have this more widely accessible not just people who can afford to self-fund I think it's amazing and I you know I wish you every luck in the world with it because you know we know seeing it day in day out and the emails that come into us at Wednesday Child just the state of desperation that so many people feel and even when I hear the cost of the service from you, I don't gulp at that because I know how many tens of thousands of pounds families have spent over many decades trying to get their loved one well. So for many to know that they can, you know, refer through a website, get seen, part with the money, if there's a hope that there's a real potential for them to be out of this pain and anguish that they themselves or their loved one is experiencing with an eating disorder, I think many would hand that money over willingly and say it's a very small price to get their life back. So I'm, you know, really excited to see what happens. And I would certainly say that, you know, we at Wednesday's Child would be very happy to be a conduit for sharing what you're up to, kind of more research and in any way that you want more of our community to share their experiences with you. I, I know we'd love to do that. And we do have a community around the world. So um, any input that we can give, then, you know, please get in touch with us. And, and likewise, I think it might be really valuable if we get feedback from this episode from people that are more interested, perhaps we could set up another chat with you and, and allow people to ask some more direct conversations and questions. I'd be very happy to do that, Debbie. Yes. Um, in terms of us having, you know, more of a an ongoing collaboration and if there are you, you've got people listening here that are interested in the treatment, I'd be happy to speak more on that for sure. Absolutely. Be great. That's great. Excellent. Well, thank you both. Thanks, Isabel, also. I know you're going to continue your great work and uh, we'll be doing another session with Isabel very soon because so many of you were interested in the uh, tapping demonstration that we did previously. So we're going to do a little bit more of that and, and particularly try and make sure that we're checking in with you all and keeping that motivation momentum going in uh, the early part of 2023. So thanks again, Isabel, as well. And thank you, Laurie. That's it for another episode of the Wednesday's Child podcast. I hope you found it really interesting. I know I certainly did, and I'm sure you'll have lots of questions. If you have and you've got any insights, experiences, or any thoughts you have at all about this, then please feel free to drop us an email. You can send someone directly to myself or to our general email address, which is hello at wednesdayschild.co.uk. And we'll be sure to send more information to you about Awaken, their services, and also of the services that you can get via Isabel. Thanks again. Stay focused on recovery and we will see you very soon.